Thank you for coming today. It is a gorgeous Saturday out there, and I'd like to thank you for coming into the air conditioning. And uh, we have a special guest that are gonna, that's going to speak before uh, Fred comes up here and dazzles you. Um, Sue Vandenbrooks from the Old Time Herb Society is here, and uh, she's got a few things she wants to talk to you about. Good afternoon. I am the new chair of the Trombley House Committee, and I know many of you have. Go All right, I know many of you have uh, gone to the Trombley House over the days and years, and it's in need of paint. And so we're kicking off a campaign to try and get some funding for painting the Trombley House. And the first, uh, you know, it's right in the middle of my forehead. <laughs> and the first um, <coughs> event that we're having is called the Princess Tea. Next Saturday, June 17th, at 11 to 1.30 p.m., Queen Hannah and Prince Charming will host a high tea for young ladies ages four through eight. The tea will feature pastries. I'm gonna just step away for a minute here. Uh, pastries that are going to be done by uh, Grace by Cakes. The cookies will be in the shape of uh, High heel shoes and crowns and tiaras. We have little frogs. <coughs> There's more than this. I, these are just the three that I've got pictures of. Cake pops, cupcakes, uh, fruit flavored uh, beverage. <laughs> tea sandwiches will be available. The cost for this tea is $35, and that would be uh, admission for one child and one adult chaperone. Should you have two grandchildren that want to come, we do have a special for $50. You can bring two children. Uh, the adult will be served a beverage as well as a dessert. And uh, there will be entertainment. And Queen Hannah has just a little thing that she wants to say. Oh, and there's a, there's a Prince Charming too, but we're not revealing him yet. Go ahead, Yes, please bring your grandchildren. Uh, it is four through eight. They can wear whatever regal attire they would like, and they can celebrate high tea with me. Please come. All right. Tickets are on sale in the office, and so you can get tickets if you want today or through the week, but next Saturday, 11 a.m., okay? All right, thank you. Now she can go home and get out of that dress. It's so hot outside. <laughs> Come on in. All right, I'm going to bring up the new chairman of the museum board, Mr. Mike Weiler. I'm filling in for about three people today, so I'll do the best I can. I know Judy's not here, and one of her questions she always asks is, who hasn't been here before? And usually we find a few that are guilty of that, but that's fine. This program is something we put on every month except for December, and we try to feature local interest topics to talk about. And uh, <clears throat> we have the schedule done for this year, and Mike's working on next year's schedule already. And so, just so you know, it takes a little while to put this together. I uh, actually tracked Fred down, at a, he was selling tickets at uh, party on McCarty fundraiser. And I asked him if that was his name and he said yes. I says, well, would your family like to do a presentation on business? And he, he says, well, yeah, I think we would, but not this year, but next year. Well, this is next year, so we have him here today. And uh, the other thing is the museum is greatly funded by the lowest millage that's levied in Bay County. And uh, that brings in about 80-85% of our funds. The rest is money we raise doing programs or grants or whatever it is and projects we work on. This was put together to try to get people to come into the museum that normally don't. But the museum's open a wide variety of hours. It's open today. You can wander through here, uh, upstairs and all around the bottom. In, uh, Actually, if you take the loop that's over here, you're going like on a tour of Bay County, so, and it's through its history. So 
please do that. And like Mike said, thanks for being here. There's a lot of other options today going on downtown and everything else. So thanks for being here. All right. So uh, just so you all know, next month in July, it'll, we're going to have the history of the United Way. In August, we will be having uh, the Bay City Players, and it will be at the Bay City Players, okay? And in September, we will be having Ideal Party Store here. Yay. <laughs> no samples. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then um, October and November, we'll be having Ron Bloomfield will be talking again about uh, uh, the Bautel collection, I believe, and then there's another one in November, which we'll get to. 2018 is already booking up too as well. Rick Mixer will be here in January. Um, Glenn Rowley will be giving us a history of Bangor Township. And then Chelsea Berg will be talking about Pine Ridge Cemetery. So um, she just wrote a new book on that. So that's what's coming up. But what's going on today, born December 5th, 1944 to Phil and June Herter, and June's in the back. Everybody wave to June back there. Um, Fred graduated from Bay City Handy High School in 1963, associate's degree from Delta College, BA from Michigan State, won't hold that against him, <laughs> teaching certificate from Cal State Fullerton, he was in the Peace Corps of Malaysia in 1967 to 69, U.S. Army Chaplain Assistant, New York City and Korea, married to Georgina Herter since January 9th, 1971. Okay, uh, two children, Natalie and Stephanie, six grandchildren. He's a member of the Saginaw JCs, Saginaw YMCA Indian Guide, Rotary Club President, Ski Patrol, uh, started Herder Music Camp at Delta College in 85, moved the camp to Saginaw uh, YMCA Camp Timbers in 91, Ofi unofficially, unofficially retired from Herder Music Center in 2011 but he's still working. <laughs> Big round of applause to Fred Hurd. Well, I think my niece, Heather, is the one that got me really into this, so, you know, I, I won't call her up, but this is the person right here. It's all her <laughs> And I used to play uh, with this fella. We used to go to McKinley School together. And uh, somehow I, I tried to stay, uh, you know, unrecognizable, uh, but he recognized me. So. <laughs> well, we have a, an interesting history. It's a, it's a, a company that now, uh, I haven't done the math, but how many years are we? 114. 114? 113, 114. <laughs> It was started by Herman Hardy, and I just met his grandson, Keith, who's here in the audience. Right here. Stand up, Keith. I'm going to... Herman Hardy started this company up in Standish, Michigan, and I've been all over Standish trying to find where the actual building was, and we think we may have found it, but... Uh, it's, it's, I think it's been torn down. In, in, in 1903, now he sold pianos and he sold band instruments. He sold everything. Anything that was musical was part of the operation. And an interesting thing that, you got some pictures up here. He used to, used to bring them all out in, you know, with a horse and buggy. And one of the things that he, he told me, now I was, I was eight years old, nine years old back in 52. He used to do what they called pie in the state. They would go different road every week, never the same road for many, many years. And he'd go out with his, his wagon with two pianos on it, right? Yes, sir. You got the same story? Yeah. He'd go out and knock on the door at a farmer's house and say, my horse doesn't seem to be running quite as well as he used to, and he's getting a little tired. Could I leave a piano <laughs> with you? Well, 
the farmer, oh sure, and he gets his sons and they'd come out and help carry the piano in the, into the parlor. And he says, I have a second one. Do you have a neighbor that might? Oh, Joe down the street. Take it down and my son will come with you. And they'd go down, take a piano into Joe's house. About two weeks later, he would come back, knock on the door, I've come to get the piano. And back then, we didn't have televisions. We didn't have you know all the stuff that keeps us entertained. They didn't want to let him take it back, <laughs> and he he would take it. <laughs> he would he would he'd bring a contract and somehow sell it. <laughs> it was a you know it, it was it was an interesting way of selling pianos. It was done it was done up until the turn of the century out, out west. They were still doing that same type of thing where they'd go out little country roads and you know sell pianos uh, because it was entertainment. You had fun with it. You sat. You stood around the piano and played. You know, we used to play the player piano. Remember? You know, people like to get around and do that kind of thing, and that's that's what they did back then. He was very successful. So so successful that he was convinced by one of his employees that they should move down to Bay City. And they moved into. I don't know if you have it on here. The, this. this is the first building that we know of that he was in. Do, do you remember this, Keith? Or? Yes, I do. Okay. This was on the corner where the uh, new library is. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, and that's all been torn down over many, many years, but this was at, on the corner there. And he was there for several years. Now, this is the location where... Where we, we, we don't know exactly, but this is you know where we think it was. That picture is in City Hall, uh, down the in the basement of City Hall, and uh, so that's that's where it would have been. And then he moved over onto Third Street, which here we go, the building that had Seitner's uh, uh, Simpliner uh, Simpliner's uh, tuxedo shop, that sort of thing, and we had card the Lincoln. Lincoln Mercury car dealership was in the second half of the building. And uh, I think my dad came home with a Lincoln one time to surprise my mother from, <laughs> probably traded a piano, you know, for something. <laughs> you remember that? Uh, that was Mitchell's, Mitchell's uh, Cadillac on Lincoln. I think he had both at, at different times. But uh, that's the old store. It was, it was a phenomenal store. It had a, an elevator that you had to pull up by rope. And uh, it was in the back. And then on the second floor, he had all these little alcoves, and they were designed like homes, little rooms. And he'd have different piano in different uh, room to make it look like it was, it was homey. And they had all sorts of uh, uh, furniture up there to make it look very nice. On the main floor, they had records, they had sheet music, they had band instruments, they had televisions, they had uh, radios, just about anything and everything that was musical was in our store back then. I was seven years old. Seven years old? Okay. okay. When they opened it, okay. Yeah. It was a beautiful, beautiful it was a showcase and a beautiful, beautiful place. There was even a washer, uh, washing machine back there. So, so I, now, in 1952, my father, and I'll go back a little bit in his history, he started in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, he he uh, took from the Ruby Music Institute, uh, played trumpet, and he was so good that he was accepted to Ohio State University. But unfortunately, he decided to go to the University of Michigan. I mean, uh, sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the University of Michigan. University of Michigan at the time had Dr. Ravelli. And Dr. Ravelli was practically the music god of the United States. He was just a tremendous, tremendous individual. Uh, my dad went to Baldwin Wallace first, then came up to Michigan, got his his uh, BA degree from Michigan, and then he got his master's degree from Michigan also. 
got the, the posting for uh, teaching to Wolf Point, Montana. And back right after the war, you, uh, if you went and taught at one of the Indian reservations or way out in the country, they forgave some of your loans, the government. So he, he went through that. And then uh, once he finished in uh, Wolf Point, and one of the things that he did for his master's thesis was to write the Mikado, which is a Gilbert and Sullivan musical, in uh, band, band script, so that a band, a high school band could play it. And so I think when I was three years old, I knew all the words to the Mikado. <laughs> but that was, that was his uh, master's thesis at U of M. Transferred back to, uh, to uh, absolutely Ips Ypsilanti, wasn't it? The Willow Run Airport area, Mom? Where you had the uh, where you lived for a while, uh, continued his master's and part of his doctorate at U of M, and then was posted to Michigan Center, Michigan in 1948. Was the band director there for three years. Here's our here's the band here. And then he had a traveling salesperson for Con Musical Instruments, and uh, there was a. And we always had it, band directors are always the first ones to get pink slipped. And <laughs> the, uh, you know, the stability was, wasn't there like, like we wish it would be. He found out that there was a music store in Bay City, Michigan called Hardy Music that was up for sale. And he thought, let's go, let's go try it. And so that's where he went. And this is my dad with Debbie. You know, the other one that didn't want to talk up here. <laughs> and that's, that's the original delivery truck. <laughs> so which one is Debbie now? Debbie, stand up. Take a, take a bow. <laughs> you need a platform, Deb. And you all seen my mother already. I think they introduced her... Uh, She's going to be 95 July 1st. And she still remembers every bad thing I ever did. <laughs> and holds it against me all the time still. Still beats me badly at cards. We, we, we refuse to go play cards with her anymore because she's constantly beating me at phase 10. I knew I'd get, get even with him, Mom. <laughs> but this is the start of our, our business. We stayed in the Hardy building for about a year and a half. And we moved to the uh, uh, location where, right next to the sub -deb. And those of you in the audience that still remember downtown Bay City, we had the Regent Theater right next to us. And the Regent Theater was a wonderful draw for us, you know, on Third Street there was very little traffic going up and down the road, but on in the Davison Building, right downtown Bay City, with the Regency right there, there were people walking all the time. And the Regency would be the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth uh, in there. That's where the Regents Regents uh, Theater went in, and then it turned. And if you ever look at the Davison Building, you still have the uh, the high part of the uh, stage structure up on top and it's still up there where they used to raise and lower the uh, curtains and all the uh, uh, extra things that you know that they needed through productions it's still up on top on this far end down here of the uh, Davison building and it used to be all empty and they've, now they've got all sorts of offices in there so but that was the, the the start of the store called music center down the basement we had six studios that were all constructed by me and my dad and several other people uh, down there. They were nice little soundproof uh, studios. And we had people coming day and night taking private lessons in the uh, lower part of this building. 1963, we purchased the building that used to be the Dinah Hughes dress shop if you remember. 
And in fact, it has it still had the inlay in the in the walkway when you walked in with Dinah Hughes on there. But it was it's been in downtown. It was called the Windy Eight Building, uh, and it was built in 1993, I believe. It's still up on the top, it says the Windy Eight Building up there, and this is the building. Well, this was an ideal location for the store because on the second floor there used to be the Arthur Miller dance studios if you remember that well there was a big big beautiful and the fact that the floor is still there I keep trying to convert it into a an auditorium or a place to to do things but it's got a beautiful floor wood floor big and open that's where they had the ballroom dancing and then they had all these little private rooms all the way around that were for private teaching and they went, went for many years. Well, we moved into it, immediately we had studios, practice studios, and they were very nice, well built. And they, they're that way still. We've kind of subdivided a little bit, and changed a little bit, but uh, the store was called the Music Center. We had these, these the script up in front. And about 1975, was it? Yeah. We did a remodel on the building. We, we always like to have something that saved you from the rain. Well, we, we had some architects give us an idea, uh, but it was a little bit more expensive than we could afford. So we went with the uh, cedar shake overhang, which kind of protects people from the, uh, the rain. And uh, that's been us for ever since. We filled in several of the windows up above for energy efficiency, those, those windows were just horrendous for uh, the heating bill that we were getting and also air conditioning. So we filled them in and they're real thick. They're like 12, 12, 13 inches thick with styrofoam and all sorts of stuff in there to, to insulate it so our heat bill is a lot, lot better. Keeps us downtown. So, and there's our, this is our building as of now. Now we still are in the piano and organ business, but when we first got here, 1952, our business was accordions. And we, I can remember for many, 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 many years, during the 4th of July parade and the St. Patty's Day parade and all these different things, we would have these big trailers, flatbed trailers, that we would have 50 to 60 accordion players on, we'd have two of them, and we used to go down through the, uh, the St. Patrick's Day Parade and the uh, Fourth of July Parade playing accordion. And Howard Harmon over here, back here, one of our longtime employees, uh, still keeps up the accordion thing. He has a little group called, what's it called, Coots? Kids and Coots. Kids and Coots. Performing at the Temple Theater tomorrow at 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> And one more thing, I took my first lessons in the Davison building, and my teacher is right here. This is Betty Pavlov. Betty! It snuck in, I didn't recognize you. Thanks, Betty. Thank you so much. Yeah? Were there, were there six studios down there, or seven? Down the basement. I can't, I, 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 I think there were seven, but I'm, you know, I... You know, it's one of the first things that go, you just can't remember everything. So. Okay. <clears throat> when, when I first got out of the service, 1972, we had set up a deal with Fashion Square Mall to open a store. We, uh, we, we had to wait, though, because we had a competitor called Grinnell's. I don't know if you remember Grinnell's. Grinnell's was the largest music store in the country at the time. They had stores in every, and the Fashion Square did not want us to come in until they had a definite no from Grinnell's. And we are very thankful that Grinnell's didn't want to do it, and we moved in back in 1972, October, we were the ninth store to open at Fashion Square Mall. Now Fashion Square Mall, <clears throat> Most of you don't don't rem remember when it was opening. There was there was sand there was a sand floor, 
inside a big empty building. They put the walls up, but we had to put the floor in, we had to put the walls in, we had to put the air conditioning units, the heating units, everything. They just provided us with a hallway and a big 17 foot dungeon, <laughs> whatever. So we built the store, we stayed there for 10 years, and we found that the cost to stay in that mall was prohibitive. You know, my CPA uh, here in town <coughs> said, you don't want to stay. So we opened up a store right down the street, built it ourselves. We had 7,000 square feet instead of 3,000 square feet, and it was half the price that we were paying to the mall. So that was a good reason for us moving. And this is, you know, the, the thing, I don't know if we have a picture of the building or not, but. I, I don't. Look just like the, this one here. Uh, we also had a store in Midland for a while. And Midland was a wonderful uh, place to be. This was the old Grinnell store. And we just took over and ref refurbished a little bit. And this is a, a location that we had down in Flint. Now, the economy has not been the greatest. And we, we had to make decisions. The, uh, when, you, when you go down to Flint, you see the largest automobile factory in the world in the old Buick Motor Division. And you probably went with me. When, from, when we were at McKinley, we went on a field trip down to Buick City. Yeah. Remember that? We went down through this factory, and they had a rubber-wheeled train that took you from the start of the factory to the end of the factory. And they were pouring the concrete, or they, the concrete, they were pouring the metal for the engines. They were taking the castings and boring them out and putting engines together. They were making doors and seats and everything that goes into a car, all in that complex. Two miles, 30,000 workers. You go down through this factory and watch an, a Buick automobile being put together. And at the end, they would pull us out of the, tr the thing and put us in the front seat and drive out to the parking lot and put the car out there so it could go where it was going to go. But that was back when, you know, that's 65 years ago. Yeah. And it, you go by now and it's total empty for two miles. Well, Flint's gone through a lot of the whole north, northern Michigan has gone through a lot of problems because they cost the Rust Belt, unfortunately. But, you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. We had to close some stores. But we're very happy with what we have downtown Bay City right now. That's our home base, and it always will be our home base. I'm very fortunate that I have my daughter, Natalie, and my niece, Heather, that have taken over the job so Debbie can sit around and eat bonbons all the time and, uh, and uh, I can give speeches like this all the time. <laughs> but it's, it, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience for us in downtown Bay City and I hope we sh we're here forever. It was very nice today to go down through Bay City and if you did happen to go through Bay City, you can't find a parking spot. It is loaded and that's how it used to be when I was a kid downtown. We used to walk through downtown Bay City and everybody was down there and, you know, we used to have uh, balser buses, remember that? We used to take those for probably a nickel or a dime or, you know, and ride down and, and uh, so that's the history. Now, as a kid, when I was at Handy High School, when I had my driver's license, we used to have a trailer, not the, not the caboose, but the, a trailer that we had forced portable studios in and we would go to Standish, Gladwin, and Taos, I believe it was, and we'd park in the parking lots of three big grocery stores and on a Monday night you had lessons in this particular school or uh, parking lot and Wednesday we'd have over here and Thursday we'd have another one then we'd move the trailer again. And that went on for a long time and then uh, we got into the, uh, the mall and we uh, purchased a, 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 a caboose-shaped trailer from another dealer and uh, brought it up. And Laurel, who's here too, is a longtime uh, employee, she named it the Kiboose. 
So remember that, Laurel? And we used to take this kibus to all the fairs, the Saginaw Fair, the Midland Fair, the Gladwin. The, so we went around and we sold organs and new electric pianos off of it. And that was, that was quite successful. Now it's sitting along the highway out there at, Ham, uh, I think it's Hamilton uh, RV, yeah. out there uh, off it's the expressway. Red. They painted it red. They painted it red, yeah. But that was our kibus. I didn't know you had these many, this many pictures. So. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little stage on the back you could put out. We used to have a fellow by the name of Frank Aloya. I don't know if any of you remember, but Frank was probably uh, touching 400 pounds. Yeah, he was a pretty big guy. He was a pretty big guy. He'd get up on that stage, and I'd just I'd cringe every time he'd do it. But he'd get up there, and he'd play, and you know, was you know phenomenal. Had a had a great following, and uh, we've had lots of good people. We've had a lot of good people that have worked for us over many, 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 many years. Um, we had Frank Aloya. We had Mike Gallagher. I don't know if he, he was a bus driver. And he was working for Hardy, and he came over and worked for us, and he became the number one salesman for Baldwin in the country a couple of years. And here was a bus driver. He could not tell you Middle C from anything, but he knew how that piano was made. And he, 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 we'd walk into our store, and he had it all open. He had five Cadillacs, little plastic Cadillacs sitting on the top of the... Uh, uh, the, the, the soundboard, and he'd say the pressure of a fully tuned piano is the same as five Cadillacs. And you want to buy a good piano, you buy this piano because that's what it was built for. <laughs> and that was Mike Gallagher. We've had several different people. Al Hill was a del delivery guy for us, was here forever. Uh, we've had a couple of guys in the audience now. I've had uh, Harold. Friederberg, I, where did you hide back there? Harold back here has worked for us for 35, 40 years? Uh, 38. 38. Oh, that's close, yeah. Tremendous repairman. Guy is just, you know, I could never get him to charge enough. He always wanted to be low, and I kept saying, yo, hire, hire me. <laughs> did a wonderful job. Now, I got Chet back here who's uh, been us for 30 years? Yeah. He's still with us. Yeah. I stopped coming. And then Howard back there in the back, he's he's was with us for 35, 43. I'm not even that old yet, so I, I can say. Yeah. And then uh, Rich Morris uh, was with us for probably 43, 50 years. And Dan uh, Majeur, who's left for Arizona so he can be with his grandbabies, uh, he was with us for at least 40 years. We've had a, a, a lot of people that have been with us for a long time. We've got some new people this year, or not this year, but in the last couple of years, that we think they're going to be with us for a long time too. It's you know, it's, it's a fun area to work in. You see people uh, when you go out, like I do. I, they they pulled me in from being retired, and I get to go out and get spit on all the time by all the kids. I go out and fit kids to musical instruments. I was out yesterday in Frankenmuth getting a whole bunch of kids excited about instruments. It's a fun thing. You know, you see the glimmer in their eyes, and it's, it's just, it, it's fun. Uh, we started 31 years ago, 1985, a camp out at Delta College. And I had Jack Yonker, name from the past. He, he did the uh, Saginaw Choral Society. He was a, a U of M grad. I'm sorry, Mel. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, he was a U of M grad, wonderful guy, and we started a camp for kids, affordable camp for band kids in the 6th, 7th, 8th grade. It was a day camp. They would come, do their thing, and then leave. And then on Friday night, we would have a sleepover where they would stay in the, in the uh, two different gyms, uh, swim. Uh, we'd have pizza party. We'd have a disc jockey and did all the things the kids <coughs> need to have and, and then we have a concert and we filled the center court of Delta College we had 248 kids the last year we were at Delta College tremendous turnout but we realized and parents were mad at me because they were coming at 8 o'clock in the morning and then had to pick the kids up at 4 30 in the afternoon and go home 
and back again the next day. Say, so, can't you get some overnight stuff? And so we found Camp Timbers, which I had been associated with Indian guides years ago. And I asked him, and he says, yeah, we can do it. So I took 16 band directors, Tom Broca, Paul Lickow, uh, Tony uh, um, Rongo, uh, all, you know, all band directors from our area. I says, could we do this up there? And we went up and looked the place over and we came up with circus tents and tents and we've been doing it for 26 years now up there. Yeah, 26. 26 years. This year, next week starts our camp. We're gonna do two weeks. We've got close to 400 kids coming up for the two different weeks. We have great community support. Uh, the Bay Concert Community, or uh, Bay Concert Band, has given us how much? A thousand dollars. A thousand this year? Yeah. thousand dollars this year. Last year they gave us two thousand dollars. Scholarships to send local kids to come to our camp. We keep the price down. It's four hundred and twenty dollars. It's seven days. That's food. Three and a half hours of music every day. Uh, they get to do zip lines and kayaks and canoes and horseback riding and mountain bikes and all that lousy stuff. We bring in disc jockeys. We bring in entertainment. This year I've got Butch Heath and Yesterday's Country. You probably all know Butch Heath from around here. He's coming up to perform. I've got a cool lemon jazz group coming up that plays uh, Chicago type style music or uh, Earth, Wind and Fire. And then I have uh, Oh, what's the last one? Uh, 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 Thunder Bay Quartet, Jack, uh, saxophone quartet. If any of you would like to come up and see these, we do them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They're open to the public up at Clear Lake, up above West Branch, 14 miles from West Branch, from 7.30 till 8.30, we have these performances. Bring a lawn chair. It's a free concert. We'd love to have you. See all these kids out there. You have to sit in the back because the kids get front rows, you know, for our, for our thing. But it's a fun week, and it's 31 years this year. And I hope to see it go for a lot, lot longer. So, um, Have I done my, my time? Well, uh, I, 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 we, we got kind of out of, out of sorts. Okay. Um, we have the 100 oh, years. Back 14 years ago, we were fortunate, my father was still alive and my mom. They went down and they got an award from the uh, 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 Michigan Business Association for being a 100 year business. And they recognized the fact that we've tied together the Hardy music with the Music Center and then we put the Herder Music Center on it. When we, when we opened up in Flint, there was a music store called the Flint Music Center. And a gentleman agreement. We went over and talked to him and says, let's put the name here so people don't confuse us, which worked great. And we call ourselves the Herder Music Center. So, and this is the award ceremony down in, down in Lansing. And there's the bank camp. What else I forget? Uh, like yeah. There's some pictures. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> That's our Herder Band uh, family band over here. So. <laughs> Now, I didn't have all these on my, my iPad. I have all these pictures on there. I didn't have most of these things, so I didn't know these were popping up. So forgive me. <laughs> was that 70 years ago, Howard, that picture that was up there? <laughs> well, that's all, folks. Uh, yeah. Thank you. It's off.
all Heather's fault, so stand up, Heather. Right, Take Heather. a bow. Come on, get up, get up. <laughs> Any questions? Question. Uh oh. Yeah, I'd like to know what the uh, best and worst thing about working in a family business is. The best and the worst thing. Oh gosh. I, well, you got to get along, you know. And uh, I think we've been very fortunate that we've been able to get along for all the years that we've been together. Uh, we haven't had any real major. Uh, catastrophes in the family and we're still together you know like so many families you hear that they don't talk to one or any one another anymore and we still talk except uh, I voted for Trump and they voted for the other guy <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh! and uh only because you belong to Jim <laughs> Music company. My grandfather was part of it. That's right. And he was part of this thing too. This is my family. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you. It wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for your grandfather. And uh, I, I told Keith when I, I, I don't think I mentioned it when I what I told you out in the hallway. Mr. Hardy, had red hair, when I met him. It was it was gray, but it was it was still red. And he was the most supple person I have ever met. And I, I was only maybe eight years old, nine years old at the time. And he could actually stand and go down like this to the ground. And you wouldn't hear bones cracking or anything like that. And he, was, he had to be probably 60, 70 years old back then. He was proud of that. Yeah. I, I, it, I, it still remains with me, remembering this. To go down and come up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to get him out. But uh, you know, it was a, it was very interesting this 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 man and when he told me the story of the pie and I'm glad that you know you remember the same thing, the pie of the state and going you never went back the same road again for many, 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 many years because you didn't want to get caught, you know, with the same story, but he did it very religiously and and knew exactly where he had been and where he was going next and sold a lot of pianos <laughs> and made a lot of families happy you know so you know, he, he well the horse threw a, a horseshoe or yeah, you know things like that broke a wheel or something but yeah he said you mind if i leave this piano here yep and maybe haul it in the house and then he'd come back later and they we want to we're having too much fun with it yeah 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 wonderful <laughs> wonderful huh? question back there yes where with with the young people today where is music headed I I worry about what's happening with our younger generations <laughs> I'm, what do you think in terms of music? I love to hear you talking about, you know, things are going great. Are they in bands and doing things with music personally? We have a problem in our country right now. We, we've become so scared of technology and we're preaching STEM, S-T-E-M, and it needs to be STEAM with arts. And it's, it's a, I talk to educators daily and uh, superintendents and I say, you know, if you take your top students in your high school graduating class, your valedictorians, your salutatorians, and most of the, of the top people, and if you go to any doctor, lawyer, Indian chief and ask them, most of them have had music in their backgrounds. And we, all of a sudden, we've, we've got to a point, and I've got one, one principal or uh, superintendent that I really got a little feisty with. They have an every other day music program. And I says, do you take your high school football team and take your offensive line and take four of them on Monday night and four of them on Tuesday night, four of them on uh, Wednesday night, four on Thursday, 
and then put them on the field on Friday night and play a football game. He says, oh no, you couldn't do that. That's a team sport. I says, band is a team sport. You, you hear people on all sides of you in, when you are playing. And it is a team sport. And how can you come out and say, we're going to push steam, or uh, st STEM, and do all the math and sciences and stuff like that, and not allow those same minds to do music, which brings it together. There is no other activity other than music that makes you use both parts of the brain mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. You're hearing and you're putting together and, and condensing it. And uh, my father was a prime example of somebody that took his music ability and he was doing computer programs. And IBM actually called him several times to find out how is he, do how is he doing it. Because he could think outside the box. And that's music. And we kind of get ste steam back in our schools. Now we're very fortunate here in Bay City. We have steam. Midland has steam. But we have so many schools in this area now that are, are going to the STEM program so religiously that they are they're not using both sides of the brain anymore. So, okay, that answer the question? <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Oh, question? I'm sorry. I don't have a question, but I have attended a lot of music teachers conventions in Michigan, and the Michigan music teachers conventions, and teachers from all over tell us how lucky we are to have you. Well, I'll just tell you, here at the museum, we've looked at STEM and decided to have a good STEM, you have to have roots, and roots is your history. So uh, that's our spin on STEM, or STEAM, and uh, I think that's important that you have to know where you've been and know where you're going. So that's right. congratulations for your efforts today, Mr. Herter. There's a little <laughs> certificate for you. Thank you. And Heather, for you, I'll let you stay over there. I know you don't want to stand up. For, your, for all your efforts. The other thing that's been interesting about these programs, and you notice that today, there's so many people that come back to hear the history of the place where they worked or the place where they did something or they bring the family or a, a guest comes in like the Hardy's here and you get to meet and exchange and who knows where it'll go or what you might learn or what you might add to the album. And that's what we're trying to do here is promote some of that activity. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Yep. So one last thing I, I, I did not mention, um, Last year, the Herder Music Center was um, honored by the Bay Music Foundation for all their hard work. So let's give them a round of applause for that. <laughs> and when, when Mike said he talked to Fred last year, I, I figured, well, I know exactly where to go to get this program here. Heather owes me like a bazillion things, so she's, she, just, she just paid up a whole bunch. Of so thank you both for all this. Big round of applause. Thank you so much for coming.